I'm here today with Anna Becker. Uh, Anna, would you like to say a few words about your academic background? Um, yeah, I uh, didn't expect to get into academia. I guess I've just always been a bit of a psychology nerd. And when mm -hmm. I started university, I um, we have to learn about the scientific method and approach from the first semester on. And mm -hmm. Surprisingly, I was very intrigued by it and I started to uh, learn about, um, about our studies at our faculty. And um, yeah, so uh, regarding psychedelics, I have um, think like many of us who work in this field, I've always been pretty fascinated by psychoactive substances. And um, I think psychedelics bring a whole new complexity into play, which is um, particularly exciting from a scientific perspective. Uh, so when I um, heard that there would be an opportunity to work in this particular field and do a PhD there, I had to take the chance, of course. Very cool. And you originally studied clinical psychology and neuroscience, right? Exactly, yeah. And so what, how did you transition or what, was there any particular inspiration or moment that you were like, ah, I really want to move in the direction of psychedelic research or? Uh, no, it was, um, I guess uh, both things were um, like two separate fascina fascinations in my life. And I um, just knew, I first knew that I uh, wanted to get a PhD. And then when mm -hmm. I uh, heard about that, there was um, this research group, even in Basel, even at my university, I think I, I think it was just for me, just clear. I didn't even have to, to think about it that much. <laughs> just It was just a question of whether I um, could do it or not, whether they are looking for psychologists or not. Yeah. Very cool. And has your motivation stayed the same or uh, has, uh, has what motivates you changed since you've been now, I guess, working towards your PhD? Um, yeah, I guess uh, it stayed the same. It's just, um, I, I don't think there will be um, ever, um, I, I don't think there are finite uh, questions in this field. So uh, what drives me is the fascination and I think that will uh, continue in this yeah. Very nice. Um, so I'm curious, since you've started being interested in, let's say, psychedelic uh, science or psychedelic research, um, how do you feel that the field has changed or developed? Um, I mean, you could look as far back or as short back as you'd like, but what do you feel has been changing the most, let's say, recently, last five years or, or 10? Um, well, uh, before my PhD, I um, noticed this, this paradigm shift that more people are getting into psychedelics. Maybe they have watched a documentary about it or read a book about it. And um, within the last one and a half years, it is now um, the reactions I get uh, when I tell about my work uh, are mostly very positive and people are very interested, um, which is it's good, I think. Um, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, one common um, misconception I get uh, within this paradigm shift maybe is that uh, some participants uh, of mine uh, come to me and think that uh, psychedelic experience always has to be life changing. Um, mm. And I always tell them that, that that's, of course, it's possible, but um, it doesn't have to be, and it's not always maybe the goal. That's so. Uh, I'm seeing here that you've you've worked or accompanied with over eighty uh, yeah. experience, psychedelic experiences in healthy individuals. Is yeah. that yeah? Okay, and so this is very interesting. And you say that a big misconception is a lot of people are expecting it to be radically life changing. And, yeah, yeah. and it's, is it, is it, would you say it's more often the case that it's not, or is it more often the case that it might not be immediately life changing 
and that some of these individuals are expecting to come out immediately after the St. LSD experience with a huge insight and they're forgetting the impact or the necessity of integration? Or is it yeah. like, where exactly do you think that misconception is focused? Well, we, I mean, I can't really tell because um, I, we don't, um, we, we have uh, one study where we have a, a six month follow up, but usually we don't. Um, and uh, I think maybe it's both. Maybe sometimes people think uh, it will be just that easy to take something, have mm -hmm. an amazing experience, get out of it and uh, say, okay, I could take this and this from uh, that experience. And uh, now I have all this um, uh, yeah, amazing insights and know what to do uh, mm -hmm. with my life. And uh, yeah, I think the other, uh, maybe the uh, other misconception is what what you said that they um are not ex they want to have this fast um fix yeah. for whatever they're seeking and of course it's not always um very because the, the the our subjects have to be very healthy um also mentally so um it's mostly our, um, our smaller things people want to change in their life. If it's something very big, they, um, they're not allowed to participate in our studies. What, would you mind telling me a couple of the, if, it's, if, it's, if you're able to, a couple of the protocols around what would con <laughs> consider someone to be particularly healthy? Uh, of course, yeah, of course, that's a whole other field. Yeah, uh, well, for a whole other talk yeah, for another time, yeah. I'm sure. But, but, of, so yeah, but it's, it's very interesting. I mean, it's, it's not a uh, categorical, this uh, sick and healthy um, of thing, of course. And um, so, yeah, I think it's, uh, it's yeah, sometimes different to differentiate. We have this, uh, our study protocol says no... Um, no previous uh, psychiatric condition. Uh, and uh, so people, if someone says, I, I have been in psychotherapy for depression and all that, they're uh, already out. So we're, we're very strict um, regarding this. But uh, for example, if someone says, if someone is on the paper very healthy, but says, oh, um, I don't know, my life is, is really boring and I miss some excitement. So I thought uh, maybe this will, this will help. And um, this would be a case where I'd say, um, yeah, it's a good, it's maybe a good idea. It, it could help, but um, you, you don't know if that's what they're seeking. Mm, very interesting. Did you, find, did you find in this one study you did with the six month follow-up, did you find that when checking again with these uh, participants that they're that they were more I don't want to say impressed um, that they felt the experience had more of a, a long lasting impact or did you feel that there was a less of a misconception with the participants with the, in the six month follow up study than the participants that you didn't follow up with I guess what I'm wondering is if looking back after six months were they able to see from a bigger perspective and say oh okay that was uh impactful yeah. um that it's not my study and it's still ongoing so i can't okay. tell um mm -hmm. but yeah, i we always have this um uh end of study examination so after um when my studies always two study days um they come uh, approximately one month afterwards and it's uh just a pharmacological standard um, just to, to have a physiolo physiological check, but also um, in our field, we do a psychological check. And I, um, of course, always wonder uh, what, um, what people say afterwards. And I have experienced that um, some people were maybe even a bit disappointed on the study day, but afterwards um, they... Uh, yeah, we're, we're able to integrate the experience in one way or another, which is interesting because they don't have, um, um, they, they do everything on their own. So they don't have uh, help. Of course, they're always allowed to contact me if they want to, mm -hmm. um, but this uh, hasn't happened yet. Have you experimented or is there, is there a set dosage here for these uh, trials in healthy individuals? Or if there is a variation in dosage, have you noticed maybe um, 
uh, I don't want to call this a disappointment, but have you noticed more people saying they were, they, that there was less of an impact than they expected mm -hmm. at certain dosages? And does yeah. that taper off in higher dosages or? Yeah, that, that would be one scenario where when people are um, disappointed and uh, yeah, I, the study I'm conducting right now, uh, we're giving 100 micrograms LSD and, and yeah, for some people this is very strong and others, um, yeah, they might be a little bit disappointed even. Yeah. Um, but also if the dosage is, uh, let's say too high, maybe for a first psychedelic experience for this person, then they also can be disappointed, I think. Um, just because they they thought it was too weird, so there was yeah. there was not th this this uh, excitement, and uh, maybe they uh, weren't able to, um, yeah, um, to to see the fun part of it. I completely. It's, it's funny you say that because I, I completely agree with that. Um, it it can seem to me that. Uh, if something is too disruptive, disruptive, there's an experience that's too disruptive, it can it can make it even more difficult to, let's say, integrate it or take something of value out of that experience. And uh, I'm not surprised to hear that there's almost a bit of a, a sweet spot to find mm -hmm. there, where I know that a lot of a lot of people, and I think that but this may be a misconception that I've I've heard about, um, where people think, oh yeah, if you take more, you'll have more of an experience. If you take more, you'll have more insight, mm -hmm. more breakthrough, more this and that. And it's it's really interesting to hear you say that. And it's something that I've I've heard reflected in, in other studies and from other researchers that that's not actually the case. There isn't just this positive correlation between like higher dose and higher breakthrough, higher yeah. level of insight. Um, and I think we're also seeing that interestingly enough uh, in other substances. I think that, that ketamine also has a, a certain threshold where it no longer becomes therapeutic, but mm -hmm. something else. Um, again, the research is still very young in all of this, yeah. which is very cool. So, okay, before we get too sidetracked there, um, <laughs> I'm really interested in your work. You will be you will be here in person, right? Yeah. Uh, awesome, then I'm sure we can talk more about this, yeah. then I'll, I'll be on site as well. Um, I forgot to mention that, but that's, yeah, I'm, I've been uh, brought in to help mainly with, with insights. So you'll be seeing a lot more of me, I think. <laughs> Perfect, cool. Um, cool. So what, the next thing I wanted to ask you about is we looked a bit at how things have changed in the past. And you, you mentioned in the last uh, one and a half years, especially, how do you see things progressing, maybe perhaps in the areas that you're working on? Um, how, let's maybe if you could focus on, let's say, for example, uh, LSD or, or psychedelics um, in healthy patients. Yeah. That'd be interesting or maybe in, in psychedelic science at large, how do you see the, the field progressing in the next, let's say five or so years? Um, well, I um, can already see the increase of, uh, of funds and uh, the growth of the work that is flowing into this field. And um, I uh, think it would be particularly uh, interesting maybe to also look at others, um, psychoactive substances um, we uh, our research group um, for example um, does also studies with mescaline um, and we're planning a DMT study um, so for for our group uh, I think this is particularly interesting um, and yeah I just generally I hope that um, it, it will be possible to give more people access to psychedelics who didn't have it before. Do you worry that this increase in funding is going to cause um, problems when it comes to the, I don't want to say authenticity, or let's say to the uh, genuinity of, of the research that, you know, I mean, because I know that once, once money sort of is injected into the game, then the, the, the interests and the stakeholders start to change in, in any area. I'm just curious if you've noticed any, um, I guess, worry, or if you've experienced any worries in, in that area. From a personal perspective, from, from a research perspective, um, it stays the same or it should stay the same so that mm -hmm. you're, just, uh, you're just there to explore. Um, I also think it's a field where, um, yeah, many, many people are involved um, very passionately 
uh, which I think it's it's a good thing. Um, so I'm, I, yeah, I'm, I'm actually pretty um, optimistic that it will um, go into the right direction. Cool. Yeah, I, I am as well. I am as well. It's just um, every once in a while I come across some worrying ideas. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, this shift is happening pretty fast, and I think that's always, um, yeah. I, I I can I can see where you're coming from. That yeah, 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 I think it's course. always um, um, it will probably be um, like in, in most fields like a back and forth thing. You know, people are maybe really excited about one substance and say, oh no, and but this uh, it's it's way better than the other one, and now we're only focusing on that, and then maybe it will um, balance itself out a little bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I see the same. Cool. So. As I mentioned already, we are very excited to have you at, at this year's Insight. Um, have you by any chance had a, had a moment to look into uh, any of the other tracks or the speakers or of the offerings at Insight? Has anything stood out to you? Uh, yeah, uh, well, it's, it's the first, uh, my first conference and uh, so first Insight conference. I have no comparison. <laughs> yeah. cool. um, I think for me, uh, especially because it's uh, everything's so new for me, it's uh, mostly about getting to know all this uh, research group I've been research groups I've been reading about and um, yeah I've uh, I've seen of course a lot of a lot of names uh, I've been hearing and reading a lot from so that's uh, very exciting for me yeah. awesome. even more exciting to be able to present my PhD project so thank you no, no, thank you, Anna, really, thank you. Um, thank you for coming to Insight. Thank you for taking the time today to, to speak with me.